Hi, I'm Ivan Mikolji. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get notified on new episodes of The Fish Guys. Anything in this coast yeah. is kind of threatened. I think Sarasalmus Neveriensis, that piranha, the Neveri piranha. Yeah, in the coastal river. Those, those, that's the most threatened piranha. Yeah. I think probably yeah. in South America. Yeah. You know? Because it's found only in that river. It's a short river, dumps into the Atlantic, the Caribbean. It has a big city on it. Yeah, it's a sewer. Right. It's a sewer. The Half lower. of it is already our sewer. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the, and the piranha are not going to go up into the hills, so the water is cooler, so it limits the distribution there. But the problem is that I think these piranhas feed on most of the brackish water of uh, fish that come up. I've seen some fresh uh, saltwater fish that migrate up, yeah, yeah. probably to lay their eggs or something. Mm -hmm. And once all this, the bottom part of this river is going to be so contaminated, all these fish are not going to go up. So they won't have anything to feed on. Yeah. So that could be a problem too for them. Say they, their food source is not going to come in. Okay, I arrived yesterday and, and we drove to uh, Barcelona, and now we're headed down to the Lost Land. Why don't you give me? Just describe the lost land vis a vis. It's, it's okay. Lost land um, is a place where we have some tepuis, where which are the flat mesa tops, mountains, yeah. um, vertical walls, flat top. The, there's that big area is called Canaima National Park, but the difference between the Grand Savannah and the Canaima area, or where Angel Falls is, is that all these tepuis in that Canaima area are in the jungle. It's all... Right, and Angel Falls... Angel is... Falls, everything is full. It's, it's, it's just all these tepuis are... Uh, Angel Falls is the biggest falls in the world, the right. tallest. The tallest. Yeah, so, but all that area is in the jungle. Right. It's, but the Grand Savannah area, it's the same rock formations, but on a savanna, on a plain, right. with short grass. Right. So it's like the Venezuelan Llanos, the flat plain. It, it, it is, like the flat plains, but with a shorter vegetation. Yeah. You'll notice that there's less trees or anything that in. No more gel. There are some, yes, there are some. But you'll definitely see a very, you'll see, uh, I don't know how you say that in English, but uh, you're going to see a very hard marking of the area where they are. For example, in the Llanos, you get a lot of Morichal, uh, Morichal palms right. with a lot of other trees on them. Right. Here, you'll just see a little line where the stream goes, yeah. and you won't see any other plants. Got it. Right. So it's good going to see a very harsh right, marking of where the rivers are going. So we're going to spend a lot of time in those water channels. We're going to spend a lot of time. That's, that, that I think is paramount. Yeah. Well, you've got a couple of endemic species from there. And uh, you have a lot that are undescribed from there. Most of the trichinopterus are not described from Catfish, there. Catfish, right? The catfish, yes. And uh, there's one uh, cyclic described from there that is endemic. It's Equidens. called Equidens chimaniatus. Chimaniatus. So hopefully we'll get to see that. That would be good to get out of Yeah, there's a couple of more. There's, um, I think it's Ribulus Grand Sabanai. It's a killie. It's a killie, and it, um, the word comes from the Grand Sabana where we're going. It's, oh, Grand Sabana. Grand Sabanai. Sabanai, very good. So, ugly, ugly really uh, I, I've seen one picture of it on the internet. It looked like blue and green. So, 
look different than the ones from the Amazon yeah. that are just yellow and green. Ugliensis. Ugliensis? Ugliensis. Uh, we yeah, we'd, have to, we'd have to look at it. Look pretty nice on the picture. So now this is going to be a, it's usually a 24 hour ride. 24 hours to get down there. To get down there driving, so. That's about the distance from New York to Florida. Just to put it in perspective. Yeah, exactly. That's a big a long ass drive. The difference is that probably we drive a little bit faster here. So it's probably a little bit more miles. Well, we're currently doing 120 kilometers an hour. Translates to what, 80? Yeah, 80. What 80? 80 is by cruising speed. Oh, okay, so. Uh, in the States, yeah, so speed it's 24 limits, hours. Speed limit 65 miles an hour, so you tack 10 on it. So some of the troopers are cruising at about 80, is where so they set. New right. York to Florida. New York to Florida, which is a. Very few people drive New York to Florida. I mean, not that it can't be done. I did it up in Honeymoon a thousand years ago. So it seems. Anyway. Um, it's going to be so very I'm interesting. One of the things that is really interesting for me, believe it or not, is the supposedly there's a lack of abundance of fish in that area. There are some species that are from there, but there's there's not a lot of fish like let's say the Llanos, or let's say in the Amazon. Are you are it's, you referring to biomass, the total biomass, body, yes, or the biomass. Or, or the diversity, the different Di species? Both, both. Now, I'll, what interests me is that some people say that this is because there's not enough food for them. And I really differ from this. I think there's enough food for them. So, uh, so I just really don't understand why there are not so many. Because let's say, uh, let's say plecos, okay? Ninety percent, probably ninety or more percent of the food of a pleco. It's an algae. It's plant-based. Yeah, yeah, it's plant, yes, plant-based, but um, how do you call this? Um, yeah, all that bacteria that gets stuck together. Yeah. It, has a, it has a name that I always forget. Yeah. Peri, perifidum. Per, perifidum? Perifidum? Perifidum. Perifidum. Okay. And these rocks are full of per, perifidum everywhere. Right. You know? So... And that's, that's the basic of most tetras too, most cichlids right. too, you right. know? So, you've got some, you got a, you got aquatic plants too. Not as many, but you, you've got what's a your, lot. What's your water temperature? Water temperature? Uh, well, we're gonna have to test that. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean... I don't, I, 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 I've never tested the water temperature. I think temperature. that correlates too. Okay, I think you get much more fish. Okay, but wait up. In the Andes, you got all these cordyland sisters, dolican sisters. Uh, you got a lot of salmon. You got a lot of, of trout. You, 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 but not. But you have nowhere near the biomass that you have in the Amazon in the warmer water. You do not. That's have, true. You just don't have the biomass. That's true. And I don't know why. But now, one another interesting thing is that there's a waterfall. This area is full of natural barriers, right? right? Right. But one of the waterfalls is its Indian name or indigenous name is where the big fish reach. That's the name of the waterfall. That okay. means that there's no big fish on the top of that waterfall. Right. So they can't migrate against the current. They they can't go on right. they, can, they can they can't can. it's a natural barrier. Right. So the big fish from the Karani or the Orinoco right. Like aymaras or uh, catfish or Still whatever. Bloody stomas. They just get to the bottom of this of this fall. Makes sense. Okay, so from there at the top, you only got the small species. Now where is that? What river is that it? is north of the dam, the Gori Dam. The Gori Dam. Yes. And its indigenous name is where the big fish 
reach Par Paranac. Rio Paranac comes and flows south to north. It's one of the rivers. Yeah, it's like Caroni. 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 Caroni, yes. It's in the Caroni River. And it's called, yeah, that's okay. of it. Okay, the Caroni and the Paragua come in. Coming together, Phil Gouri Dam. Phil, right. Which is probably the largest, a long time ago, was the largest man made water. Biggest dam, you know, yeah. Biggest lake, man made lake. Back probably in the 70s. Now, you got a lot of these rivers. All the rivers we're going to hit in the Gran Sabana are the birthplace of the Caroni. Then you got other smaller rivers like which, the. Which flows east toward Guiana? No, none of these rivers that we're going to. We're only going to hit one river that flows towards Guyana. But that's way up north. Down in the Gran Sabana area, they all flow towards the Caroni. And where does Karani go? Into Guri Dam oh, and okay. then Orinoco. Okay, got it. And they're done. Okay. Um, but you got you got all these little rivers. You know that area of, of Angel Falls. Right. You know that Karao River that that is at the bottom of Angel Falls. Right. All this goes into the Karani too. They're all connected. You know. I got it. It's going to be interesting to see how this works in the birthplace of the second or third largest river in Venezuela. These are all the birthplaces with a lot of natural barriers, with everything that it brings, the cold water, the low, low pH probably. Disculpa, gasolina por aquí. Bueno, te fue el distribuidor la que lo vamos a seguir bajando ahí. Porque el pase del distribuidor como a 600 metros a mano izquierda. Ok, gracias. And what did he say? He said the gas station is down this mountain. After we get to the bottom of this mountain, there's. Um, 600 meters on the left hand side, the gas station's gonna be right there. You got that wussy hat. Got that wussy hat? <laughs> the wussy hat is um, probably to detour the guards so they don't stop us so much and they bother us so much. Okay, where's mine? It's in the back. These are ones that came out wrong to give them away if they all, any of them ask. They're not made for it. funniest times I ever had with you was when we jumped in the middle of nowhere we got into this little oh, mortal oh, oh, oh. we jumped in I don't know who jumped first I did I was in first you were in first I and then I out. jumped and then when we were in right when we sank into the into the mud we're like okay how are we getting out <laughs> man and back in the day, we were kind of afraid, you know, we're rookies. Well, that was, know, that was the army guy, remember? It was, yeah. That was the end of the dirt road, there was an army compound. Yeah. They, they wouldn't have found us in five days. And, and the day. guy said, be careful of the anacondas. Yeah. Remember? Yeah, they, would, some... they wouldn't have even gone to look for us. They, no, they just would have taken the car. Uh, I don't know, you're always hogging this f camera. It just naturally vibrates right over to 